A staple in the world of fashion, the choker was an absolute must-have for all my fellow 90s gals. These bad boys were featured in nearly every opening scene of The Amanda Show, regular costume changes on Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and of course, completed the butterfly clip hairdo worn by my number one gal, Hilary Duff, on Lizzie McGuire. But what I'm unfortunately learning about Lizzie's closet staple is not all it's cracked up to be. You know, every time I pop on here to tell you all a story about my childhood, a little part of my millennial heart dies a little inside. I know what you're thinking, but Steph, how could the origin of a simple trend ruin your childhood innocence? Well, my friends, there are centuries of reasons. Our beloved chokers have a few dark moments. From symbolic tokens of mockery, to emblems of healing, everyone from royalty to prostitutes are said to have rocked the choker at one point or another. But before we get into beheadings, prostitution, dog collars, and Britney Spears, take it on back to the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss out on the nostalgic throwbacks. Seriously guys, don't leave me here alone. We've seen iterations of the very first choker as early as the ancient Egyptians. Pharaohs and queens wore the bougie version of this necklace, hammered with gold, strung out with pearls and diamonds. But of course, folks on the lesser status wanted to join in on the trend and settle for some simple red ribbons adorned around their necks. These chokers weren't just used as an outfit accessory, however. The ancient Mesopotamians and Egyptians believed the jewelry had healing powers. Gold was known to symbolize the skin of the sun god, which connected to the life-giving powers of the Nile River. To utilize the healing magic of this material, the Egyptians wore chokers on the parts of their body that needed the most protection, the neck, the wrists, and the head. Each emblem worn at this time offered a different protection to the wearer. For example, a hippopotamus charm might be worn as a call for protection from the goddess of childbirth. While the ancient Egyptians leaned on chokers for their healing abilities, females in 1790s England wore theirs for a different reason. Chokers were a symbol of contempt and showed a lack of respect for the French, as well as paid tribute to those who had lost their lives. During the French Revolution, there were an abundance of beheadings. To show their disdain for the gruesome ending, as well as respect for those who fell victim to the guillotine, red chokers were tied around the necks of women. Later, chokers pivoted to becoming a staple for queens and royalty of the Renaissance era. It's said that during her reign, Alexandra of Denmark became quite the trendsetter with her favorite piece of jewelry, the choker. Said to have been influenced by her many trips to India, she favored the thicker choker that were eventually dubbed as dog collars. She preferred the thicker piece of jewelry to cover a scar on her neck from a thyroid surgery when she was young. Of course, everyone wanted to look like the princess, so they created their own iterations adorned with embellishments and jewels. The strangest part about this era, though, was not only were the queen and the princesses rocking a choker, but so were the local prostitutes. In the 1860s, there's evidence through paintings and historical depictions that prostitutes were known for wearing a red ribbon around their neck. An on-a-budget choker, if you will. It just goes to show every lady loves a choker. With the 1920s quickly approaching, chokers made their brief stint in the Art Deco era. Throughout the Roaring Twenties, they were beaded, pearled, or ribboned. Less of that close-to-the-neck choker we know today, and more of, you know, like a short necklace or something layered. But fading in and out of style over the years, chokers certainly hit their stride in the 1990s. Once the ladies of the 90s got their hands on this trend, it was game over. Though not elegantly adorned with fancy jewels and gems, the chokers of the Christina Aguilera age had their moment for sure. From red carpet appearances to television shows to lining the shelves at Spencer's and Claire's, there's not a 90s gal or guy in sight who didn't have at least one of these bad boys. Even males like Mick Jagger and David Bowie experimented with the dog collar look, adding to that element of grunge that we know and love today. And there you have it. From their healing powers, to their moment of protest, to prostitutes, to limited to, chokers have certainly made their way around the block. But I need to know, were you a part of the trendsetter circuit, you know, like me? <laughs> Tell us all about your choker closet staple in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Steph DeSazio, and this is Ripley's Rewind. <laughs>